Hi booktube, I'm here with the food and literature book tag. I was tagged by the creator Book Cravings, so I'll link her channel in the description bar down below. This is about two of my favorite things, eating and reading. So let's get started. One, name an unforgettable meal scene where you felt you were there. And that's going to be the scene in Little Princess um, where Sarah is describing the incredible meal that she and Becky will eat. I think as a kid it really worked because she was appealing directly to your imagination and looking back as an adult it really works as like a meta function in that Becky is like a reader who's being asked to believe the story that Sarah is creating so it adds like all these other layers so you really do feel like you're there and it is really unforgettable. Um, nay, two, a book with a dish or scene that somehow represents the cuisine of your country. I'm Canadian um, so I honestly don't know if I've ever encountered poutine in a book. I, I may have, just don't know. Uh, or beaver tails, or ketchup chips, or like butter tarts, and Nanaimo bars, all this amazing Canadian food. Um, but I'm gonna go with pemmican, which is a First Nations food. Um, and it's made out of kind of whatever meat is on hand. Uh, you dry it out, you mix it with melted fat and berries, and compact it into little balls. Um, and it serves as a high protein, high energy meal designed for journeys and hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. The rumor is that you can store it for up to 10 years. I don't know if anyone's ever actually eaten 10 year old pemmican but you never know. So in a way it reminds me of Lumbas bread um, as sort of that one food item that can prevent, um, that can provide energy and be carried for long journeys. Number three, the perfect cooking scene. I'm going to read a passage from Ulysses for that. It's this kind of very mundane cooking of breakfast, and I really, really like it. Mr. Leopold Bloom ate with relish the inner organs of beasts and fowls. He liked thick giblet soup, nutty gizzards, a stuffed roast heart, liver slices fried with crust crumbs, fried hencods rows. Most of all, he liked grilled mutton kidneys, which gave to his palate a fine tang of saintly, faintly scented urine. Kidneys were in his mind as he moved about the kitchen softly, writing her breakfast things on the humpy tray. Gilled light and air were in the kitchen, but out of doors, gentle summer morning everywhere. Made him feel a bit peckish. The coals were reddening. Another slice of bread and butter. Three, four. Right. She didn't like her plateful. Right. He turned from the tray, lifted the kettle off the hob, and set it sideways on the fire. It sat there dull and squat, its spout stuck out. Cup of tea soon. Good. Mouth dry. The cat walked stiffly round a leg of the table with tail on high. And, uh, apparently cats say McGignow, um, according to James Joyce. So, yeah. <laughs> I just like how mundane and normal cooking breakfast is. Uh, number four, a fictional dish you wish you could taste. Anything from Willy Wonka's factory? Um, I particularly like to try the, uh, soda drink that lets you uh, float and fly. I think that would be really cool. In a controlled environment, of course. Number five, a fiction book that made you learn something about a foreign cuisine. Any book by Anita Rabdami and Indian food just makes my mouth salivate and want to eat more Indian food. Number six, what do you enjoy the most about meals and food and literature? Just when authors are able to effectively use food as symbolism um, and to represent culture, I think food is a real huge part of culture. Um, seven, the worst meal you've read about or the worst meal seen. I don't want to talk about the worst meal I've ever read about uh, because it is truly and utterly disgusting. It takes place in the end body uh, problem by Tony Burgess. So I'm going to pretend that doesn't <laughs> exist and talk about instead a uh, different kind of cannibalism uh, where Titus Andronicus cooks up Tamora's sons and serves them to her in a pie. That's kind of gross. Um, number eight, the most iconic food moment in literature, in your opinion, has to go to Walter Cunningham covering his food in maple syrup while at dinner at the Finches um, in To Kill a Mockingbird. I just, I love that scene. That's iconic uh, food scene for me. And nine, 
your favorite food in the entire world and a book or book series that matches it. My favorite food is steak cooked black and blue, which is like 10 seconds aside, uh, so it's like rarer than rare, with this salt and pepper. So it's something that's not overdone, but just right. Uh, and for me, uh, if you know about the writing that I like, it will surprise you that I actually like Hemingway. Um, I really prefer more complicated word usage, sentences, descriptions, um, and Hemingway is kind of very simple, not overdone, straightforward, but it's just right. It's very hard to get that simple style just right. Um, and I think a lot of people try and fail, but Hemingway definitely succeeds in that. So uh, thank you for creating the food and literature tag and go check out her channel and that's it. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.